risen. Alleluia. He has risen indeed. Once again, welcome to our recorded worship service at First Baptist Church, Hingham, Massachusetts, on May 10th, the fifth Sunday of Easter. And also, Happy Mother's Day. On a personal note, the injury that I sustained falling on April 23rd, six weeks more in the cast, should be enough for healing. I'm very grateful to report that, according to my doctor, um, there will be no need for surgery. Our order of service, we're going to begin once again this week with Psalm 23. Our first hymn is Rise Up, O Saints of God. And then I'm going to do a brief reflection on Mother's Day, an exercise that I hope all of us can engage in. Our prayer, the next hymn is Open Our Eyes, Lord. I'll be preaching from John 10, 11 through 18, and the title of my sermon is Authority. Our closing hymn is I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me by still waters. He restoreth my soul, he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Come. Let us worship the Lord. of all the wonderful qualities 
that we hold for our mother. A mother does not have to be perfect in order to be a good mother. In a special way, special way on this Mother's Day, may we celebrate and give thanks for our mothers. Together we praise, praise God. God. As we are united together in prayer, I continue to remind us of the phrase taken from Scripture, be still and know that I am God. Let us enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We praise and thank you, God, for life. We are grateful as we thank you for sustaining our lives. And on this fifth Sunday of Easter, the year of our Lord, 2020, we praise you for your Son, the resurrection and the life, the author of our faith. On this Sunday, May 12th, we do indeed celebrate our mothers. For some of us, a blessed memory. For others, an opportunity to express our love directly to them. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of love in and around all of our mothers as we celebrate and remember them on this day. And now with thanksgiving, we lay our requests at your feet. We pray for healing. We pray for healing around the world. We pray for healing of physical bodies. We pray for healing of mind and heart. We pray for healing of our souls and our spirits. We pray for healing of our governments, our leaders. We pray for the healing of our communities. Heal our families. Let your grace and healing be sufficient. And especially within our church family, we remember those who need you in a special way. As we simply name the following names. Grace and love, may it be sufficient for the family and friends of Bunny. Let the following experience of your abiding love and healing especially touch Jenny, Marion, Ruth, Jody, Mark, Colleen, Tyler, and Johnny. Indeed, as a family of God, we pray for our whole entire family. We offer this prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen.
Our scripture lesson is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 10, verses 11 through 18. Hear the reading of God's word. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is hired and, doesn't, and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And just as the Father knows me and I know the Father, I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. The Jews who heard these words were once again divided. Many of them said, he is demon possessed and raving mad. Why listen to him? But others said, This is not the sayings of a man possessed by the demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? May God add a blessing to this, the reading of Scripture. Authority. Make it so. Make it so. For some, you're familiar where that comes from. Captain Picard of the Starship Enterprise would say it often as a point of command when he would turn and he would simply say, make it so. Really, in one perspective, the entire saga of the Starship Enterprise was a story of authority. Overcoming adversaries, the enemy. Obedience to authority, make it so, was a common theme. But there were also plots that challenged authority. When there was an appeal to a higher authority than Captain Picard for the greater good. I remember years ago, a member of our church had a bumper sticker on the back of their car. Question, authority. Personally, she didn't look like an activist. And yet she recognized the wisdom of questioning, caution of blind allegiance. At one point in time, I talked with her about her bumper sticker, and she even shared the following. She said that she was in a parking lot, and a woman came up and looked at her and asked, question authority, what does that mean? End quote. Well, personally, I did not have to ask, ask that question. My generation, regardless of where we stood in our conclusions, with the Vietnam War going full tilt, we at least understood the movement that questioned authority. We shift now to the Bible. Authority is woven through all of scriptures, but especially when we come to understand Jesus, the rabbi, the teacher, Jesus, as in the passage that we just read, who identifies himself as the good shepherd. At one point in scripture, it's noted that Jesus taught uniquely from other rabbis and teachers of his day 
because this individual observed that Jesus taught with authority. One particular setting came to mind. A Roman centurion, a commander of 100, came to Jesus and indicated that his servant was gravely ill. Jesus' response, I will go home with you. The centurion replied to Jesus' invitation. It's not necessary. Just send the word. I am a man of authority. Send the word and it happens. Jesus, I know you are a man of authority. All you have to do is send the word and my servant will be healed. Jesus' response as he marveled, I have not seen such great faith in all the nation. This centurity understood that not only did Jesus teach with authority, Jesus was the authority. And certainly Jesus understood his own authority. We read, the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. Obedience. At another point in scripture, Jesus identified who is my family, who are my brothers and sisters, who are my mothers? The ones who are obedient to my heavenly father. And Jesus understood his relationship with his father in heaven. And he was obedient. And because of his obedience, Jesus knew that he would follow the commands and that he would even lay down his own life. But it was more than just laying down his life. The father had revealed to Jesus that Jesus the mortal, Jesus the son of God, Jesus the human being, who had limited power, just like we have limited power. Jesus was not in all places at all time. Jesus was not unlimited in his knowledge. Jesus was not unlimited in power, but rather he was a human being. And yet he understood because God had revealed to him that he was also God and that he had authority. So that Jesus had the courage to lay down his own life, having the hope it was yet to be realized, having the hope that after he laid down his life, Jesus himself would be the I am when he could declare I am the authority to take my life back up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay down my life at my own accord in obedience to what was revealed to him through God. Down through the ages, there has been a divisive question. Who killed Jesus? There are some that read the simple gospel words and they accuse the Jews of killing Jesus. With that accusation, accusation, they are ignoring this direct teaching of Jesus. The Jews didn't kill Jesus. His heavenly father did not kill Jesus. Jesus claimed his own authority and the truth of his being to understand, I lay down my life knowing that I can take it up again. I have authority to lay it down. I have authority to take it up again. Jesus was obedient even to death. Authority. Make it so. Jesus knew he was the Son of God the great I am. As Jesus' son, he was obedient to the direction of his father so that he became 
the sacrificial lamb of God. He did not have authority over God. Jesus was mortal. If he were not mortal, he could not have died. Jesus lived by faith, having hope that the truth that had been revealed to him, to him was indeed the eternal truth that would be realized through his death and resurrection. He had faith as a mortal to trust his loving Father in heaven that the finite Jesus would die only to have the infinite, immortal Jesus take up his life again. Jesus did not have authority over God. Jesus had authority over his own being. Jesus had authority over the truth and to live out that truth because of his love for us, but most because of his love for his Father in heaven. We have authority over our own life. The statement, I believe. We surrender our personal authority to live under God's authority. As we believe, we become the sheep of God's flock. As we believe, we recognize that Jesus is the gatekeeper as we enter in and become a member of the flock of Jesus. As we believe, we believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And in confessing our faith of belief, we also surrender our personal authority to be a member of the flock of Jesus and be obedient to Jesus' voice, just as Jesus was obedient to the voice of his Father in heaven. Jesus, as our shepherd, we surrender our authority to Jesus. Jesus, you are in charge. We do not have authority over Jesus. We have authority over our own lives to surrender to Jesus. And how do we know that Jesus was the person that he said he was? He laid down his life in order to take it up again. How did the people of his day know that he had the authority to teach in such a manner? A man born blind could see because he was healed by the power of God as empowered and under the authority of Jesus' ministry. Jesus, our shepherd God, once spiritually we were blind, but now we can see because we live under the authority of Jesus as we seek to follow him obediently. Amen.
Amen. Thank you.